a nice little reminder that you can view the email performance in workflows. So let's say you've got a nurture workflow, it sends out 10 emails over time and there's maybe they're just branching based on criteria in the workflow. So you've got this long workflow sending emails to a contact and you're like, well, which email is working? You know, are they getting opened? Are they getting clicked? Well, on the performance tab of a workflow, if you go into details, so not when you're editing a workflow, but if the details of a workflow, you can get a performance, scroll down the bottom. It very nicely groups all the emails together. I've got a screenshot here and you can see uh, the open rates, click rates and things like that. You can actually switch by total counts versus percentage rates as well if you want to compare. Really useful for a, for a number of reasons. One, you can very quickly see which emails are getting opened. So then that might give you some, you know, some valuable insights on subject lines. And then you can see which one's getting clicked as well. Um, some nice things about this are uh, that it includes uh, variations. So if you're doing A-B testing, uh, of emails in workflows, it'll actually show you the variations. And if an email was selected as a winner or a loser, it'll actually tell you whether it's actually been removed from the workflow if it was a loser, for example, and just the winning uh, variation continues on. So very handy. I don't think a lot of people use this or know about it. So just a reminder there on the performance tab. Oh, you know, one thing I saw on that screenshot, Craig, that's actually quite interesting. It's actually got a column for skip, which must indicate that it knows which emails are being skipped in the workflow. And it's got a number beside it, which I thought was quite interesting. Wow. I'm going to check that out. I don't know what that means. Yeah. I, I know. I just I just realized that when I was looking at the screenshot, I thought, oh, hang on. That's a little new metric that we haven't seen before. Incremental improvement. Learning as we record the show, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. And this is using snippets with personalization. And snippets are super handy. So listeners, if you are not okay with snippets, I would encourage you to A, learn about them, but B, use them because you could save so much of time. Uh, I know like I we personally use a lot in quotes. We use, use a lot in tasks. We use a lot in uh, when we're logging calls in the system, but it provides a level of consistency and continuity. And so the example we have is, as for the snippet was actually for a customer that we were doing and it was used by the customer service team and they were just using it uh, simply for a signature. And one of the key things, once they did it, they had a, actually had it in the, in the snippet. Uh, the first line said, uh, delete this and insert your first name. And so... On our coaching call, we said, hey, why don't you use a personalization token, which is the sender details, and you can put sender's first name. So we've just taken a step out of there for them to now do something because it'll automatically fill out their first name when they're sending it. So this is a super handy thing to utilize. And any bit of information that is held within HubSpot, you can pull into a snippet and utilize in this manner in a shortcut. Again, it's the little things. Saves right. you a few seconds here and there. Uh, they all add up. Correct. Creating personalized emails. And this is the carry on from the previous episode, 246, where we talked all about personalization. What do we want to say, Craig? All right. So I just, we've got a bunch of screenshots. Uh, again, if you need the show notes, just sign up at hubshots.com slash subscribe. Get the show notes in your inbox every Friday morning. Anyway, the reason the value for doing that is that you get all these screenshots. However, if you're listening to this in the car, let me just explain. In the email drag and drop builder, this is drag and drop builder, by the way. Uh, I don't think it works particularly well in the old style custom no. uh, email builder, but you should be using the drag and drop builder if you can. Anyway, it's so simple because every object, uh, sorry, every module now has on the little more button an add smart role. In fact, the only one that I don't think has is the footer module, which makes sense. You don't want to be swapping that in and out. Uh, but yeah, it's got this add smart rule. And like we went through last show, it's really easy to use. You build up your rules. The difference between landing pages or web pages versus emails, of course, is that you have a smaller set of categories. You basically got contact lists or lifecycle stages. Obviously, they don't have things such as location, where the person's uh, visiting from, things like that, which you would on web pages. So yeah, we've gone through a bunch of them and some examples there. I really like how contact list membership, you can draw, you can create multiple lists, right? So it's not as though you only have to select one list, you can choose. Got a screenshot about that. 
then managing the smart rules is really easy. That's the same format they've always had. So this has been here, you know, even when they had rich text. Um, but everything, video, images, in fact, even dividers. You, know, you can add a smart rule on a divider. So everything's there. Got a few examples. And then, of course, once you add the smart rule, got another example in the show notes here. It's just really easy. It's highlighted with this is a smart rule. So very easy to use, very easy to see which has a smart rule applied to it. <laughs> 